Hi again, it's me, and this time we're going to look at how those earthquake waves that we've just talked about, how they go through the Earth, how they, what we call propagate. It just means travel through the Earth, because they go out in all directions, from the focus or the, what they call the hypercenter of the earthquake. That's the point where it suddenly slips and suddenly moves. That is the focus, and the earthquake waves go from, from there across the entire Earth. Now, the best way of showing this is using this. A slinky. You might have one of these. My son got one of these for Christmas and has spent a lot of time throwing it down the stairs. I'm sure you've seen one of these before. You may have even used it, used it in lessons in one way. But this is what we're going to do with the slinky today. You might have one of these and see if your teacher's got one. And maybe afterwards you can have a go to see exactly how the slinky moves. What I'm going to do is move from one end of the slinky to the other, just, I'm not going to move this side, I'm only going to move this side, and I'm going to push along this direction, and let's see what happens. Okay, you can see what, what happened was that the energy went from my hand here to this end. Now I want you to look again at the slinky, and I'm going to do the same thing again, and what will happen is some parts of the slinky will be all tight like this, and some parts will be stretched out like this. Where the slinky gets pushed together, that's called a compression. Where it's stretched apart, it's called a dilation. And when the wave moves th through, some parts of the slinky are compressed and some parts are dilated. So let's try and see if we can see that again. And I want you to concentrate, like I said, just on one part of the slinky. Now, you may have noticed that, and some of the sharper ones of you might have noticed that it travels to one end of the slinky and then back down again. It bounces off, it gets reflected and refracted and goes off in all different directions, and that's what happens. Now, we call this wave a primary wave or a push wave. And actually, the earthquake that occurred in Indonesia was so powerful that it pushed up the Earth's crust underneath London, underneath England, and made it jump by a millimeter. Now a millimeter is not a lot, but that came from 11,000 kilometers away. You can then imagine how powerful it was in Indonesia, off the coast of Sumatra. It was very, very powerful. Okay, so now we've gone through all the different things of earthquake waves. I talked to you about um, P waves. There's there's another wave actually called uh, an S wave, um, which moves in a, in a different one. I'll, I'll just quickly talk to you about that before before moving on to something else. Um, before we pushed along our slinky, and that was fine, and it pushed up and down. But waves don't all move in exactly the same way. We have another wave called a shear wave. And this time, instead of me pushing through the gap here like this, I'm going to do something else. I'm going to push downwards. Now, look at that. Look again. Let's just let it settle down. If you look, those waves are far more violent than the first waves, the primary waves, the secondary waves are often the most violent in an earthquake. And sometimes people run out of houses when they feel the push wave and the bang that sometimes you get with it. And when they run out, bits of building fall on them because the secondary wave usually comes a few seconds or a minute or so afterwards.